Welcome everyone. Uh, today we're at Patrick Cigars in Washington, D.C. We're super excited to be here having cigars and coffee in the morning with one of our newest members. Um, and actually, if, if you guys want to introduce yourselves to everyone, just to get to know you a little bit, and then we can go through and talk about your business and everything else from there. Hey, good morning. I'm Diane Johnson. I'm the owner of Pepper Cigars. And it's a pleasure to be a part of PCA and have Aaron and Josh in the house with us this morning. Um, we're just here to let you know that uh, Petworth Cigars is open and ready for business. Uh, we've been in business since November the 12th of 2020, open in the pandemic, and it's just been a blast since then. Um, looking forward to continuing to grow in the Petworth neighborhood and um, just build our business here and, and support PCA in whatever manner we can. And can you tell us a little bit more about your background in the cigar industry and, and your background in general and how you got started? My background, let's start with in general, I uh, come from an HR background where I worked for uh, the Society for Human Resource Management for several years and then took on a position uh, in HR as uh, the VP of Human Resources and after that I did some consulting in uh, one of the major firms and um, had the opportunity to uh, use this facility that we're in, which um, it's, a, it's, it's part of my legacy. Uh, the building was purchased by my grandmother, my father, and my grandfather, who uh, purchased the building for her to have a, a beauty salon. So she was an entrepreneur as well. And um, we opened up the Cigar Lounge as part of our passion the desire to share the passion with others in the industry as well as our cigar community. And um, the good news is that uh, it's, it's surviving, it's thriving, and it's been a great opportunity so far. And so I think, you know, you just opened in November, which is a crazy time given that the pandemic and everything, uh, but what kind of, I guess, what kind of challenges did you encounter with, with getting started in general and then and then during the time that you did and how did you overcome that? So my, my love for cigar smoking really supersedes all the challenges that we've had to deal with so far. Um, the, um, the, the major challenge that we had really was getting a building permit which took us almost a year uh, working through DCRA and the district government to, to get that to begin our construction. Um, that's the largest challenge that I've had so far. The rest of it has been pretty easy, but significant, um, and didn't really have a challenge with the alcohol or anything like that, or, or purchasing cigars, or um, we had an excellent uh, finance company, which is Somerset Trust. They, they did an excellent job in supporting us and, and realizing the vision that I had for Pepper Cigars. And we just, we're here to survive. And Chris Riley who is the general manager of Pepper Cigars, and he's been my right arm since we met five years ago in the Cigar Lounge in Laurel. And he has supported the dream that I've had and, and brought to this his tobacconist skill set, he's a tobacconist and has worked in many of the uh, cigar mountains in the local area. And so I can let you tell me, I've loved tobacco, <laughs> smoked cigars for 20 years. My family is from Kingsville, Maryland, and we actually grew tobacco. So um, it's, it's been a long history for me in terms of tobacco. So I'll let Chris talk about this. Yeah. Well, I, I am Chris Riley, um, tobacconist general manager for Pepperidge Cigars. I think one of the things that um, definitely needs to be said, um, the passion for cigars is great. Uh, the opportunity to be in this particular uh, venture in the District of Columbia brings back for me um, the nostalgia of uh, having a lounge setting. Um, I love the various cigar uh, lounges or bars that are in the area. But I think uh, for me, smoking um, is more for me uh, a relaxation, uh, a time of peace, a time of sanctity. So 
what the Zach can tell is for me, um, I love 40s music. So the music never changes uh, during the day. We try to keep it a great work environment for those that telework. Come in, want to enjoy a cup of coffee, uh, such as we're doing, smoking uh, in the sanctity of quietness with quaint music in the background. Um, and I think that's important um, in this particular day and time where most lounges have opted to um, do DJs or bands or this, that, and the other. I don't knock any of that, but I think that uh, to bring back um, just what uh, has started in the term lounge, <laughs> to be able to come in, grab a comfortable seat, and be in the lounge in the environment, uh, to enjoy great cigar, great vibration, and great conversation. Uh, we keep politics out of the lounge. Uh, we keep the news off the TVs. Uh, this is the neutral zone. It's almost nice. like going to church. <laughs> you come in and, um, and, and enjoy. Um, it's, 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 it's like a getaway vacation, so much to say. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I know when I was just walking out, the door was open. I love the music. And you just come in, and it's very welcoming and inviting. And, you know, it's perfect lighting, so it's very chill. I, I personally, <laughs> I love it. Everybody considers it their lounge away from home. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So, how what are what are your hours? Like, when are you open for a business? We're currently open from 10 a.m. to 12 midnight. Yeah. Due to the pandemic, we close at 12 midnight. And everybody's welcome during those time frames. So we have an outdoor tent as well if uh, folks want to come outside and it's heated. And, uh, normally, um, I mean, we tried to make the comfortability of the outsiding, um, providing uh, TV as well as music, as well as the outdoor seating and the heat. Um, so that has been a great addition uh, to add, especially during the time since we are in a pandemic. It gives uh, individuals the opportunity and option to be able to go outside and uh, enjoy their smoke as well. Um, one of the other things is we are, while our hours are 10 to 12, um, that is the pandemic hours that we're um, forced to close through. But normally it would be on a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, 2 a.m. Um, and um, we pretty much between those hours, 10 uh, p.m. and 2 a.m., I would probably say is, I'm sorry, 10 a.m. and 2 a.m. Uh, there, there was a lot of revenue loss during that time because uh, a lot of people would grace the lounge with their presence um, after 10 and um, and we'll say for the full duration, 2 a.m. Yeah. So you, uh, to make up for that, um, we uh, kind of was forced to implement um, purchase a cigar um, upon entry. Um, kind of hate to do that, but um, it kind of forces your hand to keep the flow of cigars versus alcohol and, and the revenue of tobacco flowing through the lounge. So um, I guess what, what are, going back to, uh, you know, just getting started with the business, um, so like the biggest challenge was really getting the permit and stuff like that. What, what, other, what other kind of pieces or what would you recommend to others that were interested in getting started? Are there any good resources or, or things that you learned along the way that, that others might emulate? I would personally, I would probably say um, your first initial schematics of um, getting started is make sure you find a good sound architect. Um, that's most important um, because that is going to, yes. Um, I had the opportunity, the pleasure of working on the business plan, uh, and it went very well. Um, I, the uh, Small Business Association <laughs> said, in terms of the business plan, ours was in the top 10% percentile, of, um, and, uh, and so they really uh, rushed to help us get started um, with the business plan that we had. And I think uh, doing your research in the trend uh, not just in your area, but across the United States, uh, helps with um, uh, getting and securing funding and loans, uh, as well as the percentages of um, and the demographics of cigar sales in your particular area, um, as well. I did the numbers on all of that to make sure that I left no stone unturned in terms of um, giving uh, 
uh, uh, for marketing, uh, uh, accruals for uh, uh, future revenue, and uh, where I think the potential uh, for Lounge could go and grow. Awesome. Well, we are so excited to have you as one of our newest members of the PCA. Um, and I guess, what made you, did you always know that you wanted to be a member of the PCA or what drove that, that decision? The drive for me was having worked in an association and knowing the value of being there for the people in the industry um, and, and supporting in the way that you can. So that's part of the reason why I want to be a part of the PCA and to get involved as a female owner of a cigar lounge and to um, even support the growth of the industry a little bit deeper, more exponentially uh, for the fight for women that uh, are the rollers, are the growers, are the mothers that still have children to take care of. So to me, it's a lot larger than you know, just being here on a daily basis, but to be able to get good cigars in that people want to purchase that have been developed by those individuals in Nicaragua, Dominican, wherever else, the Honduras, um, and just to be a part of PCA and to fight for the right that we have to be able to smoke and enjoy premium cigars. Yeah, and well, thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. And, you know, our industry is stronger by our members and it's uh, we all need each other, kind of thing. Um, I know Josh is off camera, but did you have a quick question that you wanted to ask? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, what has been the most enjoyable aspect of creating this business for you? And and then you mentioned a little bit about advocacy. I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that also, you know, um, what do you think your consumers, what would you say to them to get involved in the fight? You know, we have a lot of lounges that are, are closed right now and shuttered mm -hmm. because of government how can we organize and be effective as you know retailers, consumers, manufacturers, parts of the industry? I think for the most part is if every lounge took the time to um, educate their consumers on what's happening, a lot of people just come in and smoke without really knowing what's going on um, and without knowing that at least, I, I hate to use this particular quote in term, it's almost like how NRA uh, National Life Association fight for the gun advocacy, et cetera. But um, we're blessed uh, to have you guys uh, fight for uh, our rights to be able to enjoy what we like. Um, so I think education is key. Um, I think the lounges ought to uh, take also a responsibility in educating the consumers, uh, their customers, um, on what's going on. Because people just, you know, a lot of times and oftentimes just come in and smoke without really knowing that at any given time, uh, this right to enjoy what we have can be taken right. and are either taxed uh, enormously, et cetera, et cetera, and et cetera. So um, I personally would love um, good sound, um, I guess, uh, newsletters that we can put in the lounges um, that would um, offer our consumers uh, an awareness in terms of what's going on. I think that would be a great idea. Um, I mean, even the lounge itself can do newsletters put your articles in there, but I think that we need to get more of the word out because the more people in the fight and engage in that fight will continue to help um, the front line. And just, and just being involved. If we're involved in PCA, then we have a better understanding of what's going on because you're on the front line. And you're then able to convey that through the different streams of social media and, and because he's really big on his social media page. <laughs> I'm not as big on that, but um, just being aware awareness then transferring that awareness to the people that are around you because there are many people who come here to relax. But still, like you said, if you want to be able to relax, you need to be able to fight for the place where you're going to relax. So absolutely. And, and it, you know, despite all the, the challenges of the year, it's been a, a good year for the cigar industry, you know, with new consumers, people have having some more time at home enjoying a cigar and then, you know, transferring over and coming to the new lounges. And I thought it was a really interesting stat that we, you know, we did the research on mm -hmm. towards the latter part of 2020 is that there are new cigar lounges, more new cigar lounges yeah. opened instead of closed, mm -hmm. you know, where a lot of other industries have been hit hard with closures you know, of course, there's been a lot of restrictions and we've had to fight against those and we'll continue to fight those.
but you're living proof of the vibrancy and the resiliency of the industry. And I, I, I have to say, I, I, I really know your response to, I think, what was going on in Baltimore, um, the potential tragic, <laughs> tra or, or tragic uh, things that were going on in terms of people in the lounges smoking, because it seems as though they were separating the lounges and the right to smoke versus the right to eat and opening up other places and forgetting about certain places. And so uh, UCA and Sullivan, y'all stepped in, that really helped change things. And I think pretty much almost within 48 hours, some things started to happen. So kudos to you guys. Yeah, the state association yes. and the local lounges did a great job yes. in Baltimore yeah. County. We yeah. still have work to do in Baltimore City, Montgomery County, and then Michigan right now yeah. is uh, yeah. the big fight right now. And these things, they keep you know, it keeps popping up and it's, it's quick when it happens. You yes. know, I know like we'll be working on getting these alerts and this stuff out because it just, it just pops up all over the place. Hopefully, eventually the trend will be, oh no, you can't do that. Right. But it's, it's a, uh, it's a constant, it's a constant fight. And, and the more people that are, like you said, aware and involved and, and all of us working together, that's how we can we will definitely take you up on that offer. <laughs> well, we welcome you to the cigar family, and you know, thank you for inviting us here and yeah. enjoying cigars time with good people. And we look forward to working with you and helping support uh, your ventures, expansion, and uh, really getting a lot of. Uh, people in the DC area, it's nice, you know, being here, having another, um, you know, choice to come to and, and enjoy a cigar. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I can definitely tell you, I mean, I live, I think it driving, it was 10 minutes for me. So I will be here. Yeah. I mean, I love the vibe in here. It's, it's amazing. I, I, you had said something about uh, the most rewarding part is when our consumers come in. Um, they, we have a happy bunch. <laughs> Um, an enjoyable bunch. Um, they come in, they enjoy the atmosphere, um, they enjoy the music. Um, we keep it strictly jazz, we keep it at conversational tone levels. Um, and, uh, and, and we, we, we have a great core. Um, and it's going well. Um, I just, you know, eventually I think um, uh, that those two may be coming. Congratulations. And I just want to let you know too that you make a major effort to keep the place clean. And that's where a lot of our patrons enjoy uh, just keeping up with things and making sure we wash everything down, sanitize, and take temperatures and write down numbers for contact tracking so we're, we're in compliance with that uh, making sure that when we walk in we're wearing our masks and you know a lot of people get they, they forget about it but we just hang in there and we work together and we have some we just want to be safe so we can stay absolutely that's great. Well, hopefully everyone is watching and and anyone who's nearby or visiting in town will stop by soon yeah, and get to experience this for themselves. I, I definitely recommend it. Thank you.